As we've been reporting to you, two national pharmacies are now limiting the number of pain reliever products that customers can purchase for kids. Here to talk about that is Dr. Todd Ellerin, Chief of Infectious Diseases at South Shore Health. Good to see you, Doctor. Hey, Dr. T. Great to see you. So, CVS and Walgreens are applying the new limits to the over-the-counter medicines containing acetaminophen and ibuprofen. Are you concerned about this shortage? And 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 how long could it last? Right. If you are, yeah. Right, Eddie, so why are they doing that? Because of unprecedented demand for these agents. Let's face it, there've been more children hospitalized with influenza this year since any other time since 2009. When you look at RSV hospitalizations, the most number of children hospitalized this year since 2018. So the demand is outstripping the supply. Here's the good news. These fever reducing agents are not critical for most kids, meaning fevers are a way that our body acts as a defense against respiratory viruses, bacteria, et cetera. So we don't have to limit them. I'll be, I'm a parent. So I'm the first one to say Tylenol, which is acetaminophen, ibuprofen, like Motrin or Advil. These are very instrumental to help our kids who are irritable. It helps them sleep better. It helps parents sleep. So, but the bottom line is it doesn't change the natural course of these infections. They will get better on their own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doctor, you are seeing a steady stream of these sick kids at South Shore. And the question is, do you have enough medicine available to treat them? And I'm hoping and I'm assuming that the answer is yes. So we do, Maria. There, there certainly has been a, a shortage in the supply of these, what we call the 5 ml cups of acetaminophen, which is Tylenol and the ibuprofen, okay? But what we're able to do is we have 20 uh, ml liquid cups, which we're able to deliver to the patients and then the nurses make sure that the right amount is given. But I want you to remember one thing, RSV, flu, COVID, most of this is in the outpatient or ambulatory setting. Most kids never make it to the hospital. They don't need the hospital, mm -hmm. right? So most of the problems with demand is actually at the retail pharmacy. But by ML, you mean milliliters, right? Just just to be clear. I, so, so you know how parents are, right? There are no limits on pain reliever products for adults. So what do you want parents to know about getting the, the no limit medications and then handing them off to their kids? Again, Ed, in most cases, you know, it, it feels good for us to reduce a fever, but it's not really necessarily. And there are other things we can do. The first is don't be afraid of a fever. It's actually the way the body fights these infections. The second is if your child is really congested, you can use um, saline droppers or, or, or sprays to help decrease the congestion. Another thing that can be helpful is a cool mist humidifier. Now, one mist one misconception is that you want to use a, a warm mist humidifier. But if your kid is having a little bit of trouble breathing, the cool mist can actually be more helpful. So things like that. And of course, remember, most of the kids do great. They don't need anything. There are rare children who have what's called febrile seizures, which means they can have seizures if the fevers go too high. In those cases, we, of course, recommend around the clock ibuprofen or acetaminophen. That's a different story, but that's the exception, not the rule. Very, very good information, Dr. T. Yes. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, doctor. Happy Hanukkah. Happy holidays to you too. I'm grateful for you. Yes, we are for you as well, doctor. Be well.